What happened back in the day when this case started, there was no sensibility. These people should have stepped back. First of all, I should have been afforded an investigation. My school had been in existence for over 20 years. My mom had been in the field for 30 plus years because she worked at other daycare centers. So when you get an accusation on a hotline phone call, why don't you give afford my family who had been in the community for over 20 years with a stellar record? The, just the, the decency of an investigation, you know you're dealing with a very volatile you know, accusation that could take off. You've got to know that as a, as a trained professional investigator, but they, these people didn't do that. So, like you said, there was no sensibility. And, and then to think that my whole family, my mother, my sister, and myself are going to just one day wake up and say, let's become pedophiles. It's just unbelievable. Where, do you, where did you do your time? I, I spent about eight and a half years up at the Bill Rucker House of Correction because they were trying to protect me because I was a high-profile case. Deluccio country. Yeah, that's Bonomo where he is country. now. Yeah, but, you know, I was, it was a good place for me to be. I, I played softball with a lot of guys that worked as correctional office up, up there, so they, they, didn't, they knew I was innocent. You know, they believed in me, even before all of the media started to catch up with the case with the documentaries and stuff. And so it was a, a kind of a comfortable place, if you can say that, in prison. And then I went down, because they, sh- they shipped all the inmates out of, state inmates out of uh, Bill Rick. I went down to Plymouth for approximately five right. and a half years. And then I started yeah. to get, like, letters. Plymouth, Ma- Moderano, Moderano, Fleming, yeah, down country. At the, yeah. yeah. I was there for five and a half years. And then guys would send me letters. They would send them to the street. And then I would get them at my prison saying, you can come to state prison. Everybody knows you, you, you got railroaded. You don't have to worry. Come to Bay State. So I went to Bay State Correctional Center, and it was a great move for me because I was in general population. I earned my bachelor's degree from Boston University, so it was a wonderful place to be if you can have a wonderful place to be in prison. It's like a, it used to be a really good place that they wouldn't send people there that were troublemakers. You know, it was kind of you had to have a certain kind of record, so much right. time. So I, right. I was fortunate about that, you know. Yeah. So what does it make you think that, you know, here's Martha Coakley, the president of the United States is coming in this weekend to yeah. campaign for her. This is a woman, again, she's not the, you know, uh, uh, suspect number one in framing you, but she was involved in it. Right. What, what does it make you think when the president is coming in to, to try to get her elected to the U.S. Senate? Right. I, I mean, I understand politics and I understand the media because I've been a product of it for so long now. And I didn't really have an understanding, to be honest, which I wish I never had to learn. <laughs> but, you know, unfortunately, it became a part of my life. And, and it's just what happens. I mean, these people support each other. It's just the way it goes. I mean, just like Hoshbaga would do whatever he could for Riley and Riley would do every, you know, whatever he could for Hoshbaga. Right. And so would not Coakley. Yeah. Exactly. They're not going to ever change... They could never admit that what they did was wrong, but yet my case changed all the methods of how they deal with children when they interview them. When my case went down, there wasn't any forensic psychologist in, in, in child sexual assault units in, in the district attorney's offices. They didn't know how to question kids. Mm-hmm. So they what they did was they badgered them over and over again for months and months until they said what they wanted to say. Then they rewarded it. And it's just like... I mean, the simplest explanation is we can get any little child to what believe in think? Santa Claus. What did you think when this happened it was, to you? you know, I it, mean, what, what was your first reaction when you realized, I could be going to prison for changing some kid's diaper? Right. I mean, you know, it, it's such a slow process. I mean, in the beginning, you think, okay, you know, this is going to go away. I mean, they're going to come. They're going to see it. Right. Nothing happened. But then you start to realize, because I'm not a stupid person, that, you know, this was taken on a life of its own. When I started seeing the, the newspaper accounts of naked swimming parties and kitty pornography rings and all these. I, I was like, where is this coming from? <laughs> but we knew it was coming from the district attorney's offices. And people read that stuff, and a lot of people read the newspaper and think it's like the dictionary. You know, they think it's factual. So when I went to trial, I, they already had a preconceived notion of who I was. So I, it was difficult to get a fair trial. one 469 4322 We're here with Tookie Amaralt. He's uh, Who are you for? Scott Brown. one 4, 4, I'm Howie Carr.